Hey everybody, hope you guys had a fantastic week. Um, just want to take the time to really thank everybody who liked my post, watched my video, um, has liked my uh, Coach with April Facebook page, um, has went over to YouTube and subscribed to my channel. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't stress enough um, how excited I am and just how thankful I am to you guys for, for watching me and, and paying attention and um, kind of wanting this to happen. So thank you. Uh, another thing, so last week we talked a lot about herpes. Obviously it is, um, April is uh, STD and STI Awareness Month. So it's kind of the perfect time for me to get out and start talking about herpes. So we're gonna kind of continue that this week a little bit, you know, wrapping up talking about herpes, um, other ST STDs, chlamydia, syphilis, um, HIV, a bunch of stuff. So, um, but what I wanna do today I really want to share this story with you uh, that happened to me about four or five years ago now. Actually, yeah, four years ago um, and about a month. So um, I was working at the Hyatt and I was working my butt off, um, working a lot of hours, helping out a lot. I was really, really stressed. So I was coming home at night and I would get like this low grade temperature. Um, and I was exhausted. Like it felt like my first trimester of pregnancy, which ladies, you know what that feels like. It, you're just exhausted. You just want to go to sleep the minute you can. So, I mean, I, I work hard so that usually doesn't, I don't feel that way after work. Um, I might be tired, but I'm not like to the point where I could like pass out. So that went on for about a week or so. And finally one day I'm like, gosh, I am just tired. Like something's not right. So, of course, it was too late to go to the doctor's, so I had to go to the emergency room. And I get there, and they, you know, kind of tell them my symptoms. They do some blood work on me, you know, stuff like that. And uh, I'm waiting forever in the room. I remember that. And then all of a sudden, in walks the emergency room doctor. And he's kind of like, he looks a little alarmed, and... He's asking me some questions, basically asked me if I was an alcoholic. He said my liver enzymes were just off out of off the charts. And I said, you know, I drink maybe once a month, so no. And um, he was like, okay. So he goes, I'm not trying to scare you. He's like, but the test results that I, you know, see from you and these, uh, these levels in your blood are usually what I see in patients that have leukemia. And I mean, if that's not gonna freak somebody out, I mean, come on. Uh, I was very like shocked, I was scared. Um, I didn't really know what he was saying. It was hard to take it all in. I just kind of was looking at him like he had two heads. And I remember him telling me that um, he was going to talk to the oncologist um, and get me basically an emergency appointment set up. Um, so I, I think one day went by because they couldn't fit me in the next day. And I went in two days later and a great guy. He was an awesome doctor. So I didn't tell my parents this, by the way, either. I didn't tell really anybody. Um, I told work. So Andy, if you're watching this video, this is that time. And um, so everyone was just kind of praying for me. I, you know, I, I was praying and it was just a crazy time. So I get to the doctor and you know, he's asking me questions. What are my symptoms like? The same thing is happening, high fever, um, exhausted. And that was really it. So he's like, you know, he's checking my lymph nodes and he's, you know, he's checking me and he's just kind of puzzled. And he's like, yeah, you know, your lymph nodes and everything seem fine. Like you look like you feel normal, like you look normal. Um, he goes, so we're gonna start doing some blood work. We're gonna test you for a list of different things. Um, he I'm sure he tested me. He tested me for a hepatitis, HIV, a bunch of different stuff, um, stuff I didn't, don't even know. And every time his test result came back negative and he was kind of like, okay, you know, let's just keep kind of testing and seeing what we can do. And if you know me, I, I hate giving blood. Like it's probably one of the, almost like a fear I have is like a phobia. By the time I was finished with all this, I was like a pro. I was giving away so much blood, it was crazy. So I had multiple appointments with a doctor. I would say maybe like between four to six. 
And so finally, you know, after one last round of testing, he looks at me and he's like, look, you know, I'm gonna do this one last test here. And if it comes back like a negative, then we're gonna have to do a bone marrow biopsy. And for those of you who don't know what a bone marrow biopsy is, um, they basically go through your bone to, to get the marrow out and a test to see if you have leukemia and probably other cancers and things, I'm, I'm not so sure. But I do know that that, you know, it does test for leukemia. And so I was like, whew, okay, like, let's see, let's see. Well, of course, you know, it came back and it was negative. Um, so he told me, okay, we have to do this. I couldn't have anybody in the room with me. It was just me, the doctor, and the nurse. And I mean, I've had two kids. I had two C-sections and you know, that's no joke either. Um, it was, it was very, very painful. I uh, won't lie. You know, they numb the bone and numb you very, very well. But I mean, grabbing that marrow out, there's nothing, there's nothing that they can do to make that pain go away. Um, I lived obviously, you know, it was like a shooting pain down my thigh. Uh, he, he showed it to me. It was actually pretty cool. Uh, it was kind of spongy looking <laughs> for anyone who wants to know. Um, so that was over. And so, you know, at this point, my parents are aware. I had to tell them, obviously, what was going on at this point. And I did my best to try to prevent them from freaking out because I was already freaked out. You know, I'm scared. I'm 25 years old. I have two kids. Like, what the heck? I might have cancer. Like, I was... I was really worried. We were all worried. We were all praying. Um, so of course the, it was a weekend or a Friday. So the weekend had to go by before I could get any results. And the doctor calls me Monday and he tells me, well, good news. You don't have leukemia. And I was like, oh, thank God. Like, thank you. He's like, so come on in the office. Um, I'm waiting for this one last batch of test results. And then we can, we'll take it from there. So I came in and, um, it turned out that I had CMV, which I'm not sure if you guys remember, but um, last week I posted something stating about um, eight different herpes viruses that humans can get, and CMV is one of them. Um, it's cytomalonoma virus, if I don't, I don't think I said that right. Um, but it's basically just a virus. Um, your body can contract, you know, contact it, and it does the things that it did to me. Now, it doesn't do that to any, everybody because there's millions and millions of people who have CMV and they just have no idea that they do. Um, so it is basically the rare form of mono, which mono, if you know, they call the kissing disease um, because it's also another form of herpes, um, just a different strand. So I had basically a mono. I didn't have this one lymph nodes and other kind of um, symptoms that it gives. So that was it. He told me, you know, there's nothing that he could really do. Um, basically, it would go away on its own, and it did. Um, I, I, a few weeks went by, and I, I felt back to normal, so which was a great thing. Um, but the crazy thing was, you know, maybe flash forward about a year or two, and one day I kind of started having those symptoms again, and I was like, that's weird. And, you know, I, I started to look into it more, and I'm thinking, can, this, can the symptoms come back? And... I read that, yeah, they, they can come back. It might not be, you know, full blown like the first time, but you can kind of experience the same type of feelings, you know, again, it's kind of like having herpes where, you know, the virus will shed and you can get an outbreak. It's kind of similar to that, but a little, you know, different. So another thing that struck me as crazy though, was that my doctor, you know, told me I had CMV, but he never really told me it was like part of the herpes family. And I know doing all this blood work to me, I know he knew I had herpes. So it was kind of weird. I'm like, okay, either he didn't want to say it to me because he didn't want to freak me out that it's part of herpes family, or he doesn't really know himself. Um, Cause I remember when he told me I had CMV, he just kind of like left it at that. He didn't really go into it, not a whole, whole lot. So anyway, um, I have now been kind of researching more and more into CMV um, and there's like societies and, and things like that, people that are working on CMV and kind of learning more about it. And actually there's a lot that um, has to do with babies and I've, I've been seeing that a lot of babies actually die from, you know, contacting CMV, you know, during infancy, like during like the newborn stage. 
and it's super, super sad. Um, so, you know, I'm going to be looking more into that and I'll be sharing some more information with you guys because I think it's one of those things that, again, the public just doesn't know about because they don't want to freak you out. I, I don't know what it is, but um, it's out there. It's a thing and you could get those symptoms. So anyway, that's my little story for the week. Uh, stay tuned for more. Like I said, we'll be posting some more stuff this week about other STDs and things like that. And if you have any questions or ever want to share any of my posts, please feel free to do so. Um, and thanks for watching. I love you guys. Have a good week.